So good evening everybody. Today we're going to look at page 66, exercise 4, reading. So you might like to pause the video now to read the text if you haven't done so already because we're going to go straight to letter A to correct. Okay, so pause now to read the text. Okay, let's have a look at letter A. It says, you're going to read the review of a book called In the Interests of Safety. Now, first look at some of the current rules in the UK, which it mentions. With a partner, say what you think the missing words are. Now, number one, you can't walk through airport security with anything made of metal. You can't take any kind of knife on board a plane and hand luggage. You can't take liquids of more than 100 mils, 100 milliliters, 100 mils, you know, through airport security. Number four, you can take anything bought in an airport duty-free shops on planes. Now, it doesn't fit, so here, let's look at the text and we'll find it. Can you see? Duty-free. There it is, marked in the blue. Not duty-free. Very good. Number six, you can't use mobiles in petrol stations or on airplanes. And number seven, you can drive when you are 17 years old. Now, it says read the article and check. I'm sure you have read the article. Now, let's have a look at letter C. Read the article again and answer the questions with a partner. Now, it says, do the authors think that the rules in A are applied to strictly, unnecessary, dangerous? So we have to identify which ones are applied to strictly, which ones are unnecessary and which ones are dangerous. And question number two, what do they say about the relative danger or safety of butter knives, jogging in an area where there are hippos, taking children to the beach, large trucks in cities, unpasteurized cheese, and traffic near schools. So if necessary, take a moment now to look through the text to find the answers to letter C. And here they are. So according to the text, rules one, two, and five are applied to strictly. Now, do you remember rule one is walking through security with metal, no? Rule two is you can't take any kind of knife, no? And rule five, is you can't take, oh, I forgot to fill it in, excuse me, I skipped it. Photos, excuse me, I skipped number five. Photos in some public places. So according to the article, these are the ones which are applied to strictly. Rules three and six are unnecessary. Let's check rule three. Rule three, you can't take liquids of more than 100 mils through airport security. And number six, you can't use mobiles in petrol stations or airplanes. According to the text, these ones are unnecessary. And rules four and seven are the ones which, according to the text, are dangerous. So number four is that you can take anything bought in the airport duty-free on planes. No? And number seven, you can drive when you are 17 years old. So these are the ones which are considered dangerous. No? Now, with respect to question number two, what do they say about the relative safety or danger of these items? Well, according to the text, butter knives. A pilot with a butter knife is much less potentially dangerous than a pilot in control of a plane. No? Talks about there the kind of fuel and things like that. No? Jogging in an area where there are hippos. Well, jogging in itself is healthy, but according to the text, if it's by a river with hippos, it becomes dangerous. Well, I think doing anything in an area where there are hippos is dangerous, not just jogging, no? Taking children to the beach. Well, there are more rules about this than for working on an oil rig, which the authors would consider more dangerous. Large trucks in cities, well, these are very dangerous and should be banned, although they probably won't be banned for political reasons. Unpasteurized cheese. Funnily enough, unpasteurized cheese is illegal in the US, but guns aren't. Hmm, which do you think is more dangerous? Although guns are far more dangerous, logical, no? Traffic near schools. People worry less about this than about dangerous dogs, although the traffic causes far more accidents. No? So those are the questions about our text. No? It's health and safety gone mad. Now let's have a look at our Lexus in context on page 67. Are you ready? Now there's some advice here. It says learning new verbs. When you learn a new verb, always make sure you check whether it's regular or irregular in the past tense. Remember that, in fact, 97% of verbs in English are regular. And I would also say, pay attention, you know, if it needs a preposition, if it's transitive or intransitive, you know, if there's any expressions or collocations that it appears in, you know, so 
go that little bit further. Now it says, find regular verbs in the text, which you mean in paragraph one, make a short high electronic sound. Number two, make an expression with your face to show pain. Number three, walk with difficulty, for example, because one leg is injured. Paragraph two, officially take something away from somebody. Number five, say officially that it is not allowed. Paragraph three, number six, make an idea stronger. Paragraph four, number seven, make somebody accept something, for example, a rule or regulation. Number eight, mention something as a reason. In paragraph five, we've got number nine, prevent something from working. And in paragraph six, number 10, make safer by slowing down. Now, shall we check? Shall we check? Have you found them? Again, if necessary, stop the video so you can find them. Here we go. So let's see, number one, to make a short high electronic sound is to beep. Number two, to make an expression with your face to show pain is grimace, grimace. Number three, walk with difficulty, for example, because one leg is injured, is limp. Now again, remember, these are all verbs, to beep, to grimace, to limp. No? Now we're moving on to paragraph two. Number four, to officially take something away from somebody is to confiscate. Number five, to say officially that something is not allowed is to ban something. No? Ban. Moving on to paragraph three, to make an idea stronger. Number six is to reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. Now we've got a prefix there, reinforce. Number seven, make somebody accept something. For example, a rule or regulation is impose. Number eight, mention something as a reason is to cite. Then moving on to paragraph five, we've got number nine prevent something from working, in this case, interfere with the preposition, interfere with. And number 10, to make safer in paragraph number six by slowing down is to calm, in this case, to calm the traffic. Now, in fact, we talk in English about traffic calming measures, now reducing the speed limit, putting maybe speed bumps on the road, and these, these are what we call traffic calming measures. Very nice. Now, before we finish, let's just take a very quick look at letter E. Now it says, are there any laws or regulations where you live that you think are unnecessary or contradictory? Feel free to share your opinions on WhatsApp. Okay. And remember, if there are any problems or doubts, you know how to get in touch. Okay. So hope everybody is well and thanks for listening. We'll continue on Monday. Okay.